area. We have 30 approved American viticulture areas. These are our designation for delimiting wine regions within the United States. We also have, up in British Columbia, six designated uh, viticulture areas. That's their geographic indicator for wine regions. They are also currently developing four more designated viticulture areas right now, and they're in the shaded uh, um, uh, stippling in the map there in, in the north. Many of these areas were planted between the, about the 1830s to the 1860s, 70s by uh, um, uh, settlers as they moved west, especially uh, through the Columbia River Valley and up from California through the South uh, Corridor into Southern Oregon. Uh, however, uh, the industries themselves tended to grow mostly since about the 1950s and 1960s. These regions uh, are found between 42 degrees down at the border with California uh, to as much as 52 degrees north latitude. We have wine regions and vineyards planted basically from the coast to about 12,000, uh, 1,200 kilometers inland. Uh, we have uh, areas that range from the very, very small, it's hard to even see. Um, oh yeah, this pointer, doesn't, there's a real small region right there called the Golden Mile Bench in the Okanagan. It's about 650 hectares size in size to the Columbia Valley, which is this large green area here that crosses over between Oregon and Washington at 4.6 million acre, hectares of land. Uh, the landscapes go from sea level to about 2,000 meters in elevation. Uh, it's not that we have uh, vines planted up to 2,000 meters, but we do have vineyards planted up to about 1,000 meters uh, in elevation. Uh, so uh, quite a range of uh, uh, landscapes across the area. When we look at just Oregon, uh, where we are here, we're in the, right in the, the middle of these uh, six AVAs here in the McMinnville uh, uh, area. Uh, 18 AVAs are defined in Oregon. We, sh we share three of them with uh, Washington, the Columbia Gorge, Columbia River Valley, and Walla Walla. And then we share one with uh, uh, Idaho, which is uh, called the Snake River Valley. We're the fourth largest wine producing state, but again, we have the third most number of uh, wineries and we're the fifth uh, number of vineyards. And so we vary a little bit between that third and fifth category for different uh, characteristics. We have roughly 700 wineries. Uh, our uh, state statistics are about ready to come out soon, but it's pretty close to that 700 number. We have about 1,100 vineyards uh, with 11,500 uh, hectares planted today. And just in the last uh, uh, statistical year, we had 80,000 uh, tons of fruit produced. We think that there's over 70 varieties. There could be as many as 80. Uh, we don't have really good records of exactly how many. Uh, and the largest producing region by volume is the Willamette Valley, where we are here today. When you go to Washington, uh, Washington has 14 of these American viticulture areas, again sharing three with Oregon, and then sharing a new one called the Lewis and Clark Valley with uh, Idaho. It's the second largest uh, producing uh, state in the United States. Roughly 900 wineries, roughly 350 vineyards, and 21,000 hectares planted. And you should note something between Oregon and Washington there. Oregon has over 1,000 vineyards and much less acreage, and Washington has 350 vineyards and much more acreage. So Washington's vineyards typically are much larger in terms of overall size. Um, 225,000 tons produced uh, in the last statistical uh, period. 80 varieties potentially planted, and the largest by volume producing area is the Yakima Valley in, in Washington. If we go to Idaho, Idaho is a relatively, uh, I, you know, they've had some history going back into the 1800s, but it's a relatively small producer. Uh, three AVAs, one shared with Oregon and one shared with Washington, as I said before. Uh, 18th largest producer in the United States, so there's quite a few others that are bigger than Idaho, but it's uh, growing quite a bit. Uh, roughly 50 wineries, 200 vineyards, about 600 hectares of uh, vines produced, or uh, acreage planted, and about 3,000 tons in the last uh, year was produced. 40 varieties by the last count, and the largest producing region is called the Sunny Slope area, and it's uh, right on the border here with uh, Oregon. 
to go up to British Columbia, British Columbia has these six designated vit uh, viticulture areas with four more being developed. Um, second largest producing province within Canada, Ontario is number one. About 260 wineries uh, throughout uh, BC, about 1,000 vineyards, 4,300 uh, hectares planted, about 35,000 tons of fruit produced. Over 60 varieties, again, by last count. And the largest producing region is the one that probably most people know, and that's the Okanagan Valley right here um, uh, overall. So if we move from the general characteristics of some of these regions and move into climate, this is um, uh, looking at just uh, precipitation, annual precipitation for um, um, the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and these numbers are all in mil uh, millimeters here. Uh, our annual rainfall throughout uh, the, this region ranges from what would be called a temperate rainforest over uh, 2,500 millimeters per year uh, along the coast of Oregon and Washington uh, to a true desert, which is less than 250 millimeters per year throughout much of eastern Oregon and parts of eastern Washington and even Idaho. Most of the wine regions that we uh, have throughout this area are all in the rain shadows of either the coast mountains or the coast mountains and the, the Cascades. If you look at just wine regions, these are the basic numbers. Uh, we average across all of these regions about 760 millimeters per year, although it varies quite a bit from not too far from here getting about 1,525 millimeters per year to the Waluk Slope in uh, Washington getting 180 millimeters per year, true desert kind of uh, uh, annual precipitation values. However, if you go from looking at annual precipitation to looking at growing season, just what happens between April and October every single year, our precipitation is very limited. As a matter of fact, what you're seeing out there today is an extremely rare event. Many places in Oregon uh, rarely get rain whatsoever in, Jan in July. So this is a pretty unique situation that we have. It's actually good because uh, it's, it's comfortable uh, temperatures right now. Last year, uh, Byron, 95, 35 degrees Celsius uh, when we were here last year at this time. So I think I'd rather take, take this than, than the, the heat. Um, our wine regions throughout the western uh, U.S. average during the growing season about 28% of our annual rainfall. And if you take April off and October off, it's almost zero. It's really that, that different. So when we go through the months of May through uh, August, it's extremely dry throughout the vast majority of these areas. If you look at the regions just within the uh, uh, growing season, uh, the average is 180 millimeters um, from the Fraser River Valley, which is uh, this area up in here uh, in the British Columbia area. That is the wettest, again, to eastern Washington, the Waluke Slope area. If you go to climate, uh, this is uh, characteristics, just growing season temperatures during the uh, uh, the course of April through October. Our temperatures range from relatively cool to uh, relatively warm throughout the area. Again, proximity to the coast and or uh, distance inland uh, into more desert uh, dry regions there are the big difference here. Uh, the median value is about 15 and a half degrees Celsius during the growing season, but it can be as high as 18 and a half down to about 13 and a half. So these regions kind of range from what you might experience in Europe, going from the Mosul Valley to maybe uh, the, the south of France or the central part of Spain, Portugal. If you look at growing degree day equivalents, the, they're roughly about, in degree Celsius numbers, 950 to 2,000 on average over the long term. But if you look at it in the last 10 years, we've been roughly about 1,300 to 2,400 uh, uh, growing degree day uh, units um, in the Western US. One thing I want to highlight is um, uh, what happens during uh, the ripening periods of uh, uh, late August through September in our region here. Uh, our diurnal temperature ranges going from the day to night uh, are generally quite high. Uh, they're some of the highest uh, that are in the world. Um, we vary as much as, so on average, we, we vary 17.4 degrees Celsius between day uh, maximum and nighttime minimums throughout these wine regions. But southern Oregon, the region that I'm from uh, down in this area, uh, has some of the highest uh, diurnal temperature ranges that I've seen in the world. Uh, in terms of looking at climate. Uh, if you get, of course, up toward the coast, up in here in the Gulf Islands, 
uh, it's a little less in terms of that uh, diurnal shift. And for those that are familiar with an index that was created called the Cool Night Index, everywhere in the Pacific Northwest is uh, 12 degrees Celsius or lower. So we're off the bottom part of the chart of, uh, of, um, of um, cool night uh, temperatures. So with that, just a quick summary, 30 AVAs, six uh, designated vit viticulture areas in BC, more being developed, latitudes from 42 to 52, uh, all the way from the coast to 1,200 kilometers inland, 650 uh, hectares all the way up to 4.6 million. So we have some very large Uber areas that are of course being subdivided down. Uh, vineyards are planted up to about a thousand meters. I think we, we've got a couple that are pushing maybe just a little bit more than that. Uh, all total, the entire Pacific Northwest region is about 2,700 vineyards, about 38, 40,000 hectares of wine grapes, about 350,000 tons of produ uh, fruit produced, and we have roughly 2,000 wineries uh, um, uh, crushing that fruit and making wine. We grow over 80 different varieties. A lot of experimentation is happening throughout wine regions in the Pacific Northwest. And they're doing it because we have a, a really wide range of climates that can ripen uh, quite a few different uh, varieties. Strong seasonality and rainfall um, with you know, roughly 25% uh, happening during our growing season. And most of that's limited to two months of that growing season. And we have some of the world's uh, widest diurnal temperature ranges. So I uh, thank you for uh, uh, listening and, and, and letting me share some of the Pacific Northwest with you in terms of these characteristics. And what I want to do is invite Kevin Pogue to come up and, and do the same with our geology and landscape framework within the region. Thank you.